note that we just talk that p of h greater than equal to 0, but you know that probability initially we defined probability is a function from c to r it is a real number, but you know that it is not only real number it is, is actually it is 0 to 1 only probability always between 0 to 1, but initially we just talk about it is nothing but c to r for any a p of a is a real number, but one by one we gave the axiom. So, axiom 1 says that p is greater than equal to 0, it is a positive real number including 0 greater than equal to 0, p of a c is equal to 1, but you know that for impossible event p of phi is 0, but here we did not mention p of a greater than equal to 0 we mentioned, but p of a less than equal to 1 we did not mention in the axiom. Also third uh, union of a i, i is equal to 1 to infinity, this probability is nothing but sum of i is equal to 1 to infinity probability of a i. Uh, so, this is axiom 1, axiom 2 and axiom 3. In particular, we discussed a, it is given probability of a 1 plus probability of a 2. So, there are many other things we already we use in probability that if a is subset of b then probability of a is less than equal to probability of b and we know that it is a kind of notation all the element in b which is not element in a b minus a this is nothing but probability of b minus probability of a if a is a subset of b. So, those properties so p of phi is 0 p of uh, a is less than equal to 1 those properties we have to prove because it is not in the axioms. So, those properties in the future we will use frequently that because it is probability. So, that means a is a subset of b then probability of a is less than equal to probability of b. What about probability of a complement? It is nothing but probability of a 1 minus a p a. So, those you have already learned some probability basic probability we frequently for computing probability numerical problem you use this, this kind of uh, results. So, those results it is neither in the definite uh, exhumes nor we have proved we cannot use that because we do not know it is true or false. So, whenever we prove it then only we can use it. So, if it is in the exhume you can directly use it because by this exhume it satisfies then only it is probability. So, if we say p is a probability then it must satisfy all this exhume 1, 2 and 3. For any other property if you want to use in the future we have to prove it. So, some of the important theorems or results will prove in the here. So, some of the important theorems because all those theorems in the future we frequently use it. So, it is important that we should know that uh, it is really correct. So, we have to prove it first. Let us discuss this theorem first theorem theorem 1.1 if a 1 is a subset of a 2 then probability of a 1 is less than equal to probability of a 2 and probability of a 2 minus a 1 this notation should be like this it is a uh, forward slash uh, a 2 minus a 1. So, this should be probability of a 2. So, in a set theory it is not the minor real number 3 minus 2 equal to 1 it is a set a 2 minus a 1 means all element in a 2 those does not belongs to in a 1. So, this is nothing but probability of a 2 minus probability of a 1. So, this is the if a 1 if this satisfy under this condition. So, let us prove this theorem first. So, it says that theorem 1.1 if a 1 is a subset of a 2 probability of a 1 is less than equal to probability of a 2 and probability of a 2 minus a 1 this is equal to probability of a 2 minus probability of a 1. So, let us prove this. So, first of all let us write down what is a 2 minus a 1. Suppose this is a sample space S, this is a 2 and a 1 has to be subset of a 2. So, this is a 1. Now, a 2 minus a 1 means this set. 
So, this set can be represented by a 2 minus a 1 can be represented by a 2 complete intersection a 1 complement because uh, yeah a 2 intersection. So, if you if you intersect with a 2 the common element of a 1 complement will be containing all this set. So, all the element in S which does not belongs to an element of uh, a 1. So, if you take intersection of a 1 with a 2, so this is nothing but a 2 minus a 1 complement. Now, this a 2, a 2 minus a 1. So, this set a 1 or this set a 2 can be written as disjoint union of a 1 union a 2 minus a 1. So, this join union of suppose this is a 1 and these are the a 2 minus a 1 this. So, suppose this set is b, b, b 1 and this set is b 2. So, then b 1 union b 2 is equal to a 2 not only that b 1 intersection b 2 is phi. So, we consider here b 1 is equal to a 1 and b 2 is equal to a 2 minus a 1 for simplicity we are just taking this notation. So, now we can see that b 1 intersection b 2 is a null set. Now, just Venn diagram very quickly we understood it for that is why we wrote it, but set theory also you just you can show that if s belongs to the left hand side then this belongs to this, this is also null set you can show that because uh, b 1 is nothing but the set a 1 and b 2 is nothing but all the element which does not belongs to a 1, but a 2. So, that is why these are disjoint. So, now using axiom 3, using axiom 3, using axiom 3, we know that because B1 and B2, union B2, because B1 and B2 are null set, so probability of B1 plus probability of B2. So, so which implies B1 and B2 is equal to A2. So, probability of A 2, this is nothing but probability of B 1 is nothing but B 1 is A 1, probability of A 1. So, here we can write since B 1 intersection B 2 is null set. So, this is uh, by exhume 3 it is required. Now, probability of B 1 is A 1 plus probability of B 2 is probability of A 2 minus A 1, which implies here we are getting probability of a 2 minus a 1 is nothing but probability of a 2 minus probability of a 1. So, this is the first result a 1 subset of a 2 probability of a 1 less than equal to probability of a 2 this is the theorem actually a 1 subset of a 2 then this. Now, next we have to prove that probability of a 2 sorry this result we have proved sorry sorry this project probability a 2 minus a 1 is probability of a 2 minus probability of a 1 we have proved it but we did not uh, this prove this result probability of a 1 will be less than equal probability of a 2. So, now this is probability of a 2 minus probability of a 1 we found that probability of a 2 minus a 1. Now, by axiom 1 for any event a 2 minus a 1 also event because a 2 minus a 1 you can write a 2 complement a 1 a 2 intersection a 1 complement. So, it is a event. So, this is greater than equal to 0 by by axiom 1. So, you can see that what the axiom 1 says, axiom 1 says that probability of A should be greater than equal to 0 for any event A. So, A is because all the other set uh, these elements are, so because uh, A 2 also belongs to C, A 1 also belongs to C because they are event we are talking, A 2 intersection A 1 complement also will be in C, in C so it will be event. So, that is why this will be greater than equal to 0. So, from that because probability of a 2 minus probability of a 1 is greater than equal to 0, we say so we see that probability of a 2 is greater than equal to probability of a 1. So, this is the proof of this theory 1, this, this proof is not very complicated or difficult, but till we need to prove it because, uh, because in the future we will write down, we will use this theorem. So, we need to know that uh, we frequently use it. A is a subset of B, so probability of A less than equal to probability of B, and probability of B minus A is equal to probability of B minus probability of A. Whenever A is a subset of B, if A is not a subset of B, we cannot use this result. So that's why it is important. Now, 
theorem 1.2 says that for every element event A, for every event A, probability of A will be greater than equal to 0, less than equal to 1. Now, in the axiom 3, we have already, uh, sorry, axiom uh, 1, we already know that probability of A is greater than equal to 0, but less than equal to 1, we do not know that we have to prove it. So, let us prove here. So, theorem 2, 1.2. For any A belongs to C, that means A is a subset of S, any event actually, the probability of A is less than equal to 1, greater than equal to 0. By axiom 1, by axiom 1, probability of A is greater than equal to 0. Now, we have to prove that probability of A is less than equal to 1. How we can prove that? So, Since A is a subset of S, which implies probability of A is less than equal to probability of S. This is by, so we have already proved this, that is why you can use here by theorem 1.1. Now, which implies probability of A is less than equal to 1 since this is the P s using using axiom 2, axiom 2 says that P s is equal to 1. So, so now if you now hence combining these two P a is less than equal to 1, greater than equal to 0. So, these are very straightforward proof. So, next theorem says that theorem 1.3 for empty set P of phi is equal to 0, because in the axiom we did not mention that. So, we have to prove it. So, theorem 1.3 for phi, because since it is belongs to C also, so it is not needed for phi it is a event, p of phi is, is equal to 0. So, p of phi is equal to 0, but phi al already in the C. So, now because S complement in C. So, p of phi is equal to 0, how we can prove that? So, now if you consider S and phi two events, S intersection phi is nothing but phi from by axiom 3 probability of S union phi, this is equal to probability of S plus probability of phi. Now, in the left side side, it is nothing but S, this is equal to probability of S plus probability of phi. Probability of S, we already know this is 1, this is 1 plus probability of phi, which implies probability of phi is equal to 0. So, these are a very straightforward, but we want to prove, because without proof, we may not be use it, uh, it, it, may, it may not be used for further uh, in the uh, whenever we will use this, we need to prove this. So, now the another theorem theorem 1.4 for any com A complement, A is a event for any event complement of A of A probability of A complement. So, sub sometimes A complement is nothing but if it is the S. A is the event. So, so, this is A, this is S. Now, A complement is there all the element which does not belongs to S. So, this is the A complement. Now, sometimes we denote A dash, A bar, A complement, it is just a notation this is defined by all element S such that S does not belongs to, does not belongs to A, this is the notation. Now, for suppose if you use A dash, it is theorem 1.4 says that probability of A dash A complement is nothing but 1 minus probability of A dash A complement. So, how to prove that? 
So, we can use this relation because A union A complement is nothing but S also A intersection A complement is phi. So, using you uh, using axiom 3 axiom 3 p of a union a complement this is nothing but probability of a plus probability of a complement by axiom 3 because they are disjoint which imply probability of a union a complement is s this is nothing but probability of a plus probability of a complement which implies probability of a complement is equal to so p of s is equal to 1 so p s minus probability of p a this is nothing but 1 minus probability of a. So, okay, actually it is a typo uh, sorry it is a mistake probability of a dash is equal to 1 minus probability of a. So, this is theorem 1.4. Now, theorem 1 point says 5. So, theorem 1.5 says that for a finite mutually exclusive events finite number of suppose a1 a2 a n are pairwise mutually exclusive event we can write probability of a 1 union a 2 union a n this is equal to probability of a 1 plus probability of a 2 plus probability of a n. It seems that it is very obvious from the axiom 3, axiom 3 already it is mentioned for the infinite number of events, but till if, if it is mentioned for infinite and 2 events also it is meant. So, we need to prove it from the infinite for finite case also it will be true it have to prove it. So, first let us prove this. So, theory 1.5 says that let a 1 a 2 a n be a collection of pairwise mutually exclusive set of events. Then probability of a 1 union a 2 union a n this is denoted as a actually here probability of a 1 plus probability of a 2 plus probability of a n for any finite suppose infinite it is given. So, then we have to prove that finite any finite union also it will satisfy because they are mutually exclusive. Let us consider B i is equal to A i for i is equal to 1 to n and B i is equal to null set for i is equal to n plus 1 n plus 2 like this. Hence, we have a infinite collection or and they are pair, pair wise mutually exclusive also. So, this is actually countably infinite pair wise mutually exclusive set of events. So, why they are pair mutually exclusive? Because if you consider any i not equal to j b i intersection b j i not equal to b i intersection b j if i j are both less than equal to n because they are a 1 a 2 n are pair a is mutually exclusive. So, a i intersection a j will be phi or uh, for any of the i or j it is greater than n then one of the will be b i or b j will be phi and then intersection will be phi. So, they are mutually pair wise mutually exclusive events. So, pairwise mutually exclusive events. Hence, using axiom 3, using axiom 3, probability of B1 union B2. So, let us write write down in the next page. So, using axiom 3, so probability that B 1 union B 2 union like this infinite collection this will be summation of. So, let us write like this probability of B 1 probability of B 2. So, uh, we can write union B n union B n union like this plus B n plus B n plus 1 
like this. So, note that up to b 1, b 2, b n it is nothing but a 1, a 2, a n and the more than n b nothing but phi implies. This is equal to here also p of a 1 because here infinite collection b 1, b 2, b n infinite collection. So, we can apply axiom 3 here. So, by axiom 3 this union this is equal to this and then we are replacing their uh, representation like a 1 probability of a 1 plus probability of a 2 plus probability of a n plus probability of a n plus b n plus 1 become phi probability of phi plus probability of phi like this. So, the left hand side union of with the phi it is nothing but probability of a 1 probability of a 2 union a n. So, with union with phi will be the same set and the right hand side it will be probability of a 1 plus probability of a 2 plus probability of a n and the remaining will be all zeros, 0 plus 0 plus 0. So, that is why we proved this result for finite case also. So, this is proved. Now, uh, this is that is why we can so like in the axiom 3 we have uh, used for two events. So, it is not uh, required axiom 3 actually in finite events we can only write. So, then this finite case we have proved here only. So, then we can uh, say that it is true for finite cases also, but here we written in, in particular for finite two disjoint sets also probability of a 1 in 1 probability of a, a, a n 1 u 2 equal to probability of a 1 plus probability of a 2, but we have proved in theorem 1.5. So, next uh, important result is that for any two events a and b. So, a and b are if they are disjoint suppose if a and b disjoint if a and b are two events that means it is in this c such that a intersection b is equal to phi then by axiom 3 also in theorem 1 point uh, here what is the theorem 1.5 uh, this is uh, for finite cases also probability of a union b will be probability of a plus probability of b because this can be uh, because they are disjoint. Now, if they are not disjoint for any event for any two events A and B which may be disjoint or may not be disjoint. So, any two events A and B. So, that means A B belongs to C this collection probability of A union B. So, because it is a sigma field A union B also will be in sigma field. So, it will be again a event this is nothing but probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. This is the theorem. So, this is one of the important theorem you know that uh, addition of two events. So, it may be disjoint. So, if it is disjoint then probability of A intersection B will be phi probability of A phi is 0. So, in that case this will be true probability of A union B equal to probability of A plus probability of B. But if in general cases how we can prove it? So, suppose if you use a Venn diagram, so suppose this is A and this is B. So, this is the sample space S, this is the set A, this the set A and this is the set B. So, then this set is nothing but A intersection B. Now, if you add probability of A, so this is the probability A probability of A and then with adding with probability of B, then you can see that A intersection B you are adding two times. So, that is why one A intersection B we have to subtract to get the probability of A union B. Now, we will prove it analytically also Venn diagram it may not be uh, exactly it may not be we may not get the clarity just it is just a graphically we are representing how to prove analytically. So, A union B. So, let us again take the help of this. Uh, so, suppose this is S, this is A, this is B, this is A intersection B. Now, this A union B if we want to represent A union B as a sorry. sorry sorry this is s this is a actually i want to make it s then this is a 
and this is B. So, then we got that this is S, this is the event A, this is the B, this is A intersection B. Suppose you want to uh, find the A union B, we want to represent in a 3 different disjoint sets, union of a 3 different set, union sets. So, one set is like this, another set is like this and another set is this. So, this set can be represented as A minus A intersection B, this set nothing but the A intersection B and this set is nothing but B minus A intersection B. So, this is we denote as C 1, this is we denote as C 2, this is we denote as C 3. So, A union B it can be represented as C 1 union C 2 union C 3 where C 1 is nothing but A minus A intersection B, C 2 is A intersection B and C 3 is B minus A intersection B. C 3 is B minus A intersection B. Now, C 1 is A minus A intersection B, C 2 is A minus A intersection B, C 3 is B minus intersection B. You can easily show that C 1, C 2, C 3 are mutually exclusive events because C 1 and C 2, uh, C 1 defined by all elements A which are not in A intersection B and C 2 is exactly that A intersection B. So, this will be disjoint. Similarly, C 3, C 2 also will be disjoint and also C 1, C 3 will be disjoint. So, this can be because common part is A intersection B, we are, uh, we are considering all element in C 1 which is not in A intersection B and C 3 is all element in B which is not in, in, inside A intersection B. So, C 1, C 3 also will be disjoint that can be very easily shown. And also C 1 union C 2 union C 3 can be shown that it can be it will be the A union B. So, these are uh, disjoint. Uh, so, C i intersection C j is phi for i not equal to j. So, using theorem 1.5, so theorem 1.5 actually uh, this finite disjoint a mutual pairwise mutual exclusive event we can have this result. Probability of A union B is probability of C 1 union C 2 union C 3 because by using a theory 1.5, this is probability of C 1 plus probability of C 2 plus probability of C 3. Now, what is probability of C 1? Probability of C 1 is nothing but A minus A intersection B plus probability of C 2 is probability of A intersection B plus probability of C 3 is B minus A intersection B. So, which is equal to now we apply the theorem 1.1. So, A intersection B is a subset of A. So, it is nothing but probability of A minus probability of A intersection B. It is as it is probability of A intersection B plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. This is using theorem 1.1. Now, we just simplify it this probability of A intersection B and probability of A intersection B cancelled. So, then finally, we got this is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So, this is one of the important result. So, there are many applications to find the probability uh, suppose A and B probability and intersection B probability known, then we can find the probability of A union B. Mm -hmm.